Hello, dear friends. Today we are going to learn about a drama thriller film called The Mad Women's Ball from 2021. I wish you a good viewing. Eugenie, along with thousands of people, sees the famous writer Hugo to his last journey. During the ceremony, the girl has a seizure, but manages to stop it in time. Late for dinner, Eugenie lies to her parents that she was visiting a friend. Only her brother Théophile smiles calmly, realizing that his sister is not telling the truth. To change the subject, the boy starts talking about the upcoming debate, and Eugenie asks permission to attend the event with her brother. But the father sharply refuses, reminding her that a lady cannot participate in such things. Before going to bed, the girl goes to the bathroom and has another seizure, during which she talks to someone. But Eugenie comes out of it again, noticing her grandmother at the door, waiting for her granddaughter for the regular evening ritual. In the morning, Théophile is going to the debate and finds his sister in his carriage, whom his father has strictly forbidden to go. But the girl is not going to the debate, but only asks her brother to give her a ride to the outskirts of town, where she can read a book and smoke away from her strict parents. Although the boy is not happy about this idea, he cannot refuse his beloved sister. After buying a fresh bun, Eugenie walks into a simple coffee shop where she reads poetry while sipping a cigarette and looking at the guy at the next table. Noticing this, the stranger strikes up a conversation and lends her a book about perfumery, leaving a note with his name on the first page. He makes her promise to meet him someday to return the book. In the evening, while reading the book, Eugenie does not tell her brother about her meeting with the stranger. The brother, with his head on his sister's lap, listens to her read the book. The next day, the family arrives at the neighboring estate where Théophile Fiancé lives. This union is very important to the father, and he is extremely unhappy when Eugenie starts insulting the young girl again. This causes a conflict in the family. On Christmas Eve, Eugenie and Theo put up the Christmas tree, and the young people go up to the attic to get decorations. At this point, the girl has another seizure, and she confesses to Theo that she now sees many different spirits, not just one man, as before. Eugenie talks frankly with her brother and asks him not to be afraid, because the book that the guy in the cafe lent her says that there are many people like Eugenie. The girl goes back to her grandmother's bedroom to comb her hair and put her to bed, but at some point she drops everything she is doing and starts rummaging through the closet. From there, she pulls out a pendant that her relative lost 40 years ago. When her grandmother asks her how she knows about it, the girl admits that her late grandfather told her about it. In the morning, her mother wakes her up and tells her that she and her father are going to the neighboring estate again. The woman asks her daughter to behave well and not say anything unnecessary. Noticing the tears in her mother's eyes, Eugenie thinks that she is just worried about her behavior. So, hugging her mother, the girl, unsuspectingly, prepares to leave. Eugenie notices a traveling suitcase at her father's feet and realizes that they are not going to visit. Looking out the window, the girl does not recognize the road, but when she notices the mentally ill women in the garden, she immediately understands everything. Unfortunately, it is too late to run away. The carriage stops at the gates of the psychiatric hospital where her father brought Eugenie after Théophile shared the girl's secret with him. The medical staff immediately took the girl in their arms, ignoring her cries, and only Theo could not remain calm, leaning against the carriage as he felt sick. After some deliberation, the head of the family signed a document indicating his consent to his daughter's compulsory treatment. Head nurse Genevieve examines the new patient. She was not particularly ceremonious with her and immediately noted that any disobedience would lead to solitary confinement. Eugenie arrives at the shared bedroom and is immediately shocked by the place she finds herself. There are dozens of women here, half of whom behave completely inappropriately. They immediately try to touch the young patient, but Louise comes to the girl's aid. This is a girl with obvious mental problems, but it seems that these problems are caused by the treatment and environment here. The patient talks constantly, telling her about her engagement to a young doctor, Jules, and that their clinic organizes a costume ball every year for the rich and bureaucrats. Over lunch, Louise introduces the newcomer to the local patients, telling them in detail about each of them. The first night is very difficult for Eugenie, and she hardly sleeps. In the morning, she watches the head nurse take Louise somewhere, and from their conversation, it becomes clear that this is a common practice. Louise is brought to a large office where dozens of doctors have gathered, including Jules. He smiles at the patient without anyone noticing. The head doctor of the hospital, Dr. Charcot, begins the hypnosis session, and when the girl falls to the floor, he calmly steps over her and says goodbye to everyone. Before the next procedure, the patient is transferred to the infirmary, where she regains consciousness. She is visited only by Dr. Jules, who escorts the medical staff out and, taking advantage of the girl's naivety, tells her that he will soon propose to her at a costume ball. After that, the doctor puts one hand under the girl's dress and does something pleasant for himself with the other. Taking advantage of her little free time, Genevieve runs home to visit her elderly father and have lunch with him. She tells him the latest news from the clinic. 
Back at work, Genevieve goes up to check on the new girl, and Eugenie addresses the nurse on behalf of Blondo, her dead sister. The woman doesn't want to hear or believe what the crazy woman is saying and orders her to shut up. The doctor examines the patient and prescribes treatment with cold water and ice, which finally breaks the girl. Theo looks for Genevieve and asks her to help Eugenie. He admits that he is very sorry for what he has done. The man asks the doctor to give the girl a book. After some thought, the staff member tells Eugenie about the situation and Theophilie's visit, but agrees to give her the book only if she contacts her deed sister and helps them talk. One night, Genevieve wakes the patient and brings her to her office, where she plans to witness the ritual. For a long time, Eugenie can't get in touch with Blonde, but then the deceased gets in touch and tells her that her father fell ill in their kitchen. Abandoning her business, the woman runs home and finds her father after a seizure. When he asks his daughter how she found out about what happened, Genevieve decides to confess. But all she gets from her father is criticism and accusations of insanity. After another session of hypnotherapy, Louise's legs and half of her body give out. Seeing this, Eugenie can no longer keep silent and tells the doctors everything she thinks about it, not hesitating to say anything and accuse them. For this, the girl is recognized as dangerous and transferred to a solitary dark cell. This ward is headed by the stern Jean. Food is brought to the patient through the window at the bottom of the door. The only windows are opened only from time to time. It seems that all this therapy is only aimed at breaking the patient's will. One day, when Gina comes to Abusi Eugenie once again, the girl tells the nurse that she communicates with Gina's late mother and knows all her secrets. For this, the nurse uses force and releases the girl's neck only when she has no more breath. All this time, Genevieve is thinking about what happened, and, unable to stand it, she secretly tells the girl that she will help her get out of the clinic. All she needs is a little patience. The nurse convinces Dr. Charcot that the patient has finally lost her will and is no longer dangerous. The doctor then gives permission to transfer the girl back to the general ward, where everyone is preparing for the upcoming ball. Eusini finds Lois in a wheelchair, but the girl does not lose heart and still believes in her upcoming marriage and a happy future. At night, Eugenie manages to read the note that Genevieve secretly gave her. Theo receives the same secret letter inviting him to the ball. The evening of the ball arrives. Wealthy and influential guests arrive at the clinic, wishing to have fun with the mentally ill patients. Théophile also arrives at the invitation and almost immediately meets his sister. He asks her to dance. Eugenie follows them, suspecting them of conspiring with Genevieve. The fun begins, and some of the guests openly laugh at the strange women. Someone plans to realize their animal fantasies by treating the patients to strong drinks and whispering tender words in their ears. Taking advantage of this, Genevieve manages to get Eugenie and Theo into her office. She changed the girl into her regular clothes and walked with them to the exit. Jules also managed to take advantage of the fun. He took Louise and brought her to an empty office. He told her that he was going to marry her. Realizing that the paralyzed girl could not resist, the doctor threw her on the table, finally achieving what he had dreamed of for so long. One of the elderly patients, who had lived in the clinic for 25 years, burst into the office just as Jules was about to fulfill his wishes in revenge for her husband's infidelity. This did not stop the old woman from beating him on all the important parts of his body. Jean noticed that the patient and her brother had disappeared and rushed to look for them. Noticing the fugitives in the corridor, the nurse started screaming, but Genevieve managed to lead the couple out of the gate, where the crew was already waiting for them. The nurse herself remained on the clinic grounds, refusing to run away with Eugenie. A year later, Eugenie writes a letter to her friend, saying that she is free and living happily away from everyone. She no longer hides her abilities and helps those in need. Genevieve reads it with a smile, sitting on a bench in the clinic's park. But now she walks in this park not as a nurse, but as a patient. This was the price for Eugenie's freedom. If you've watched this video to the end, you should know that I'm glad to have viewers like you. Thank you for watching to the end. Please subscribe to the channel and write in the comments what kind of retelling of the movie you would like to see. This was 18 Recapped. See you in the next video.